Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. You are listening to Focal Point. Latest column is now up at rightlyconcerned.com. I just sent a tweet out. So if you're following my Twitter feed, Brian J. Fisher is my Twitter handle. Or you're on our Focal Point Facebook page, you can get the link to it. Title of my column, and I'm going to get into this as we get into the second hour. The title of my column is King Barack the Lawless Takes Us Back to the Dark Ages. That's the title of the column. I'll explain what I mean by that. King Barack the Lawless Takes Us Back to the Dark Ages, back to the time before the Magna Carta, and I spell that out uh, in the column. Number to call if you want to join the conversation, Free for All Wednesday. Remember, we have special programming tomorrow and Friday, so this is our free-for-all Friday version. 888-589-8840 is the number to call, 888-589-8840 if you would like to uh, join the program. By the way, I also want to mention that we here at AFA have made July a month of prayer for our country, for the church, and for our families. If you go to afa.net, you will see the banner for prayer there. And we have a, a prayer that you can pray every single day of the month. In fact, our prayer for today is the prayer that I prayed for you, George Washington's prayer that I included in my prayer at the beginning of the program, the prayer that George Washington crafted for his country. So let's make this a month of prayer together. All of us here at the listening audience of Focal Point, part of the AFR and AFA network, go to our website, afa.net, and you can get a prayer for each day of the month. All right, well, let's go to the phones, 888-589-8840. Let's go to Richard in Mobile, Alabama. Richard, welcome. What's on your mind? I got a couple of things, and I hope you don't cut me short because I'd like to get them off and, you know, uh, say it completed because twice I've called Kevin McCullough, and twice, two different times, he's, he's changed my word. By the time he's through talking to me, he's going to change everything I said into something else. And uh, when you see him, tell him I forgive him, but I appreciate it. He quit twisting me up. Number two, uh, most people ain't Christians. There's a lot of people that go to church. We need people to be saved, be born again. The church is full of people that are not saved. That's what the problem is. The Bible clearly states there's only a remnant to be saved. And I, my prayer is for everybody to be saved. I don't want nobody to go to hell. I mean, I really don't. And I pray for everybody that I could think of when God puts me in the path to be saved. The point is, people, you know, there are people going to hell that, you know, really don't go to church, will never go to church, whatever, go to hell. My concern is that when the Lord said, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Those are the people that really make me tremble because those are the people in church. So my prayer is people to really check their salvation out. I mean, really see if they are saved or if they're just religious. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what Neil Mammon was really talking about is... You know, we have a, a lot of people that go to church that probably have very little energy in their spiritual life, very little um, commitment, uh, very little dedication to the kingdom of God. They're kind of pew sitters, and their faith is not something that animates them and drives them uh, Monday through Saturday. And Neil Mammon's point, look, only 17% of committed Christians were able to create the United States of America, bring it into being, foster our independence from the the tyranny of the crown and create found the greatest nation in the history of the world we've got more christians today that are sitting in the church on sunday sitting under the teaching of the word that are worshiping god more today than we had then then so if anything we should be more active more involved uh, more energetic about defending our values proclaiming them and advocating for these values in our public policy. All right, Richard, listen, thanks for the call. And, you know, Richard basically saying, look, we want to we want to pray for awakening to come to the church. If there's any great need, it's for awakening, spiritual awakening, to come to the church. And that's, the by the way, why we call it a revival. I don't know if you thought about this much, but a revival is something that you call for when somebody was alive. They were alive. Now they're dead. They're comatose. They're inert. And you want to revive them. Uh, you can't revive a dead person. You've got to give him life first. So the church needs to be revived, needs to be awakened from its slumber. And then we can go about the business of bringing more and more into the kingdom. Let's go to Brandon in Sioux City, Virginia. Brandon, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? 
Brandon, are you with me? Okay, let's go to Pete in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We can grab uh, Pete in Fayetteville. Pete, are you with me? Yes, sir, Brian. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Fine, thank you. I appreciate all you do as usual. I just want to make a couple quick comments, um, if, if it's all right. Yes, sir. How do we encourage our sisters in the Lord, or even those that are not, you know, practicing Christians, that, you know, in the last 30 years, I've only met a few, I've only met a few people, and you are one of them, and my mom happens to be another one, she's 84 years old, that, that we believe, you know, women should not be in the military, and I'll just, let me add a couple of quick things. I don't know where, anywhere in the Bible where it says a woman should have command and control over a man. Not to mention there's that sexual tension. Women are a distraction to men. It's not to belittle women in any way. They need to realize and understand they are equal with man. God just designed us differently. I commend the ladies for their sacrifice, for their hard work, for attaining great ranks to the ranks of general and colonels and, and uh, sergeants major. However, they, they just that's not their place that God has called them to. And I know a lot of women are very proud of their service. We have them in local churches all across the country, thousands of them. We have many of them in my local church here of 7,000 people. And I thank them for the hard work. A lot of soldiers, female and male, come into the military to get that college tuition assistance. I think that's great. I commend them. However, didn't back in the day, like during World War II, we had the Women's Army Corps. Couldn't we start something like that again? Because I think men should be in command and control of men, not women because I've had a few female commanders and first sergeants, and there is. There's always that underlying, undertone, mm -hmm. distraction. So I just want to encourage the ladies out there. Are they misguided, or what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I think that's a great question, and I think, you know, frankly, Pete, it's just a matter of people lacking the courage to say it. I think most people are a little bit uneasy about putting women in combat for any number of reasons. One of the reasons I don't want to do it is I do not want to put America's young women in harm's way. It's our job as males to use our strength to protect them. It's not their job to protect us from harm. It's our job to protect them. It's a husband's responsibility to use his physical strength to protect his wife and to protect his children. It's the responsibility of American males to use their physical strength, to use their stamina, to protect their families, and to protect the American citizens. It has a, a lot of it has to do with the kind of culture that we want to be, and I believe we want to be a culture where men use their strength to protect the women and children in their midst. And we're not saying it's not a matter of inferiority, and that's what you're saying, Pete, which I appreciate. A lot of people think that, that we're saying that they're inferior. We're not saying that at all. We are saying that men and women are fundamentally different. They are both equally important, equally significant, equally valuable. It's not a matter of inferiority or superiority. It's simply a matter of difference in, a, in the role that God has assigned for us to play as males and females in ways that are complementary to one another. Women have things to contribute to life, culture, family, church, whatever, that men simply cannot do it. They can't bring it to the table. It's not in their makeup. God didn't make them to make that kind of contribution, but we've got to have it. We have to have the contributions that women and women alone can make. So this isn't putting them down. This isn't making them second-class citizens. This is saying, look, we need the unique things that you have to offer. We don't want you. We don't want. To, we don't want to get you off course by getting you out there trying to do things that men are designed to do, because then we are going to miss the the beauty and the treasures that you have to offer that we can't give, that we can't provide. And so everybody's impoverished. You're put in a role that you really can't succeed in, and we miss as a culture, as a family, we miss the unique things that you have. To give to us. All right, listen, I appreciate the call, Pete. And, you know, I think I think a lot of people agree with you and me, Pete, and agree with, I think it was your, your mom you're saying, I think a lot of people agree with us. They just, they're just afraid to say it because they know the, the, the they, they don't want to say it to Megan Kelly. That's for cotton picking, sure. Get your head lopped off uh, by, <laughs> by the dragon lady of Fox News who just got a promotion, by the way. She's going to uh, prime time in the evening and somebody's going to have to get bumped. Shepard Smith or Brett Bayer or... They're not going to bump Sean Hannity. They're not going to bump Bill O'Reilly. That would leave Greta Van Susteren, Shepard Smith, or Brett Bayer. So I don't know who's getting bumped in order to make room for her, but that's going to happen when she comes back off of maternity leave. Speaking of that, that is something that women can do that men cannot. They can have babies. 
They can conceive. They can nurture the most precious gift in the universe, the gift of human life. I mean, how important and precious and treasured is that role? I mean, that's something that no man can contribute. And obviously, we don't have women making that contribution to our life. We'd have nobody. There would be no people on the planet. Let's go to Terry in Vincennes, Indiana. Terry, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, first time caller, first time listener, actually. Fantastic show. Well, thank you. Uh, I came to faith about a year and a half ago. Fantastic. And, uh, I'm, I'm pleased, pleased to say that I'm definitely not a religious pew warmer. I'm definitely an active member of my church, and it's been absolutely wonderful. Good for you. Um, I have listened and watched every minute of this George Zimmerman, uh, Trayvon Martin trial. Uh-huh. And um, even when I was traveling to and from, I'm an entertainer, to and from my performances, I was listening, and, and uh, it's been fascinating. But my, my, my feeling is that a lot of people uh, got so pent up in the news media spin uh, and, and, and emotion of the actual um, situation that they're not looking at the cold hard facts which are being brought out in the trial. And unfortunately, if you're going to just sit down and watch, you know, catch a headline on an internet news site or a quick shot of a, a news uh, bulletin and not actually do the research yourself, you, you can't, I don't think it's fair to make a, a real valid, uh, a, a, you know, judgment against either George Zimmerman yes. or uh, Mr. Martin. Yeah. Well, listen, Terry, listen, I'm, I'm out of time. I'm up against a hard break. Thank you for calling. And uh, maybe we'll have a chance to talk about the Zimmerman case. This is a case, in my judgment, frankly, that never should have been brought. They're just not a case for second-degree murder here. This is clearly uh, an instance of self-defense. I think the only reason this thing is even in trial is because of race. It's not about justice. It's about race.